Okay, so this is a discussion when it comes to inversion recovery inside of MRI physics. I've just uh, I've noticed in recent months and years that not a lot of people, including myself at some point, really didn't understand how inversion recovery worked. We kind of accepted it. Oh, you know, whatever we're... Inversion recovery is going to make either stir for a fat being dark or flare for water being dark, but we didn't really understand it truly. So I just wanted to do this quickly. Let's look over here, um, just what we're seeing here. So we see uh, in the y-axis, we see either positive B0 or negative B0. Now that is the direction of the main magnetic field. And that's the direction that T1 recovery takes place. Now remember, only things that have a certain or any kind of positive or negative amounts of T1 recovery can be manipulated by inversion pulses or excitation pulses. Okay, so excitation pulses and inversion pulses only affect things that have either a positive or a negative amount of longitudinal magnetization. Now we know that the only way that we can actually be able to excite um, and measure signal is when it's at some sort of it is inside of the transverse plane. But in this case, we're talking specifically about T1 recovery. And let's just look at a sequence here. So in this case, there we go. So we see, let's just focus on the bottom here. We see that in any inversion recovery, a sequence starts with a 180 degree inversion pulse, and then it um, has a certain time between the 180 degree inversion pulse and the 90 degree excitation pulse. And then it's going to have the normal, as you know, assuming it's a fast spin echo, it's going to have a, a train, an echo train of 180 degree refocus impulses. And so you'll see anytime you're doing a fast spin echo, anytime you have a 90 and a 180 degree pulse, you're going to generate a spin echo. And so we're going to have different echoes that are happening at different TEs or distances from the 90 degree excitation. But that's a different uh, discussion. Just giving you an idea. Now, the distance between 100, one 180 degree inversion pulse and the next one, that is our repetition time. And our repetition time, really, at its core, is how much T1 recovery time we are allowing in between either excitations or inversions in this case. Okay, so when I first put a person on a table, or if I have a, you know, have a really long TR or something, that I've allowed, uh, in this case we have two tissues, tissue X and tissue Y. They could be anything. Um, those tissues are fully, their net magnetization vectors are fully um, recovered and in line with B0 plus, so the positive longitudinal plane. Okay, uh, at the, the moment that I got you into the magnet, you know, maybe you didn't have, you know, these things just regrew. And usually this takes approximately about 5 T1 times of tissue to have the complete recovery, okay? Anyway, so now everything is, is recovered by the time I've put the patient on the table, you know, put them into the, mag into the magnet and walked back to the control panel. So now we have complete recovery of both of these tissues. Great. Um, and what these tissues are going to do when I put a 180 degree inversion pulse in them, they are going to, they're not going to turn like this per se. They are actually going to, we're going to put in a 180 degree inversion pulse and they are going to flip into the negative longitudinal plane, B0 negative. And what we're going to do is, and each one of these tissues are going to recover at different rates because what they're going to do is there it's always easier to uh, go with the main magnetic field the direction think of it as it's it's easier to swim with the flow of a river instead of oppose it and so you'll see all of these tissues are going to um, they're going to lose negative magnetization 
cross what's called this null point and regain this positive longitudinal magnetization if we give it enough time. And thank goodness for all of us that work in the field of MRI is that these different tissues recover at different rates, which is the reason why we all have jobs. So let's go over here and let's look at this 180 degree inversion pulse. So that's exactly what's happened here. We have had everything started out up here, but the moment I gave it a 180 degree inversion pulse, then these two types of tissue are now fully in the negative B0 plane. Okay, and a lot of people think that just giving a 180 degree inversion pulse is enough to make a tissue dark. So for instance, if we're doing a stir, we want fat to be dark. If we're doing a flare, we want fluid to be dark, right? Fluid attenuated inversion recovery. Um, but a 180 degree pulse is not enough. Because remember, if you remember what I was saying before, only the things, only the tissues that have uh, either a positive or negative amount of longitudinal magnetization will be affected in this case by the next pulse, which is the 90 degree excitation pulse. So in this case, we've just checked in with these two tissues right after they've both been exposed to the 180 degree inversion pulse. So both tissues are, are completely in the negative B0 plane, which is what we see here. But instead of really focusing on, on both just right now, let's just focus on a single tissue. So in this case, we will focus on the, the tissue Y, I don't know. So this 180 degree inversion pulse has allowed and has flipped this um, tissue into the negative B0 plane. So it, is, it has 100% or in this case 100% recovery in the negative B0 plane. And what it's going to start to do, just to give you an idea, over time it's going to get less and less and less and less and it recovers at its own rate. And then it's going to right here, that's this null point. Right here is where if we excited right either, you know, right here or right here or right here or right here, there's going to be a very low signal intensity uh, inside of this specific tissue. And, and, and that's where our correct inversion time really comes in. So let's just look at this one tissue. So right now I have this one this one tissue and it's in the negative B0. So it still has a ton of longitudinal magnetization. It just has negative longitudinal magnetization and it will begin to recover. And so this is what we see here. So um, this in, in the in the x-axis here, we see, you know, this is just time. So it starts out as full negative longitudinal magnetization starts to lose, 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 lose until ultimately there is either very little positive or negative or no positive or negative longitudinal magnetization. The idea here is that if we have this inversion time correct, we have a space between this 180 degree inversion pulse and the 90 degree excitation pulse. And so only the amount of, of either positive or negative longitudinal magnetization will be affected and can be manipulated by the 90 degree excitation pulse. And so something else to keep in mind is that, so let's say we have a 180 degree inversion pulse. If we are slightly too early or slightly too late, we will still have the same amount of magnetization so in this case, if we're looking at uh, slightly too early in terms of our, of our, inversion, uh, inver our inversion time, or TI, uh, at this point, the 90 degree excitation will only flip, it won't flip all of this longitudinal magnetization, it'll only flip the small amount of longitudinal magnetization into the transverse plane and measure it. So in this case, that tissue will be darker in comparison to something that's had a lot of time to recover. Same thing here, it would be the exact same signal intensity so long as we're not being sensitive to the, 
the, um, the direction within the transverse plane. So that would be called phase sensitive, which we're just talking about magnitude reconstruction at this point. So you'll see here, both of these areas, they're both equidistant from that null point that we're calling it. And so either if it has a negative longitudinal magnetization or if it has a positive longitudinal magnetization, those will result in the same signal intensity because both will be uh, manipulated by that 90 degree excitation and be flipped into either, uh, both will be flipped into the transverse plane. I know these aren't perfect, but something like that. They should be the same. And so, so let's just let's just look at some examples here. So in, in in this case, we had something that was either slightly too short or slightly too long, but those would still result in a tissue that is dark on purpose because it doesn't have all of this recovery that's occurred, right? Um, the 90 degree excitation pulse would not be affecting a large amount of you know, a, a tissue that's had a chance to recover. But this is what we're, we're showing here. So if I did have a 180 degree inversion pulse and I waited too long of an inversion time for this tissue, or maybe this is the desired intensity that I want my tissue to be, there's really no correct answer really just depends on the signal intensity that you want for a certain tissue. So in this case, we've waited uh, a longer time, and so the, the, this, this specific tissue has crossed the null point, and it's continued to recover in the positive longitudinal plane. It will ultimately completely recover if we wait long enough, um, but in this case, we've, uh, we've waited for it a little bit too long to cross the null point, therefore, it will have a large amount of longitudinal, positive longitudinal magnetization. So the 90 degree excitation pulse will take this amount of, of that tissue and flip it into the transverse plane to, for it to be measured by the coil. And it, it, assuming it has a short TE, this would have a, uh, you know, a higher signal intensity when compared to this. But it's, it's not just that simple. We have, in this case, now we're taking it back to, remember we had the, we had the, the, the original, the green and the blue. So each one of those, thank goodness, recover at different rates. And that allows us to have different signal intensities for those different tissue types. And so each one of these tissues, in this case, you know, X is the green and Y is the blue, it, they both recover at different rates. And so if I wanted to make sure that the signal intensity, in this case, of the green, so of, of tissue X, uh, was really, really dark, I would want to wait this inversion time. So I would, I would wait for, for this specific tissue type to cross the null point. At that point, if I hit a 90 degree excitation pulse right there, then there would be still a decent amount of this other tissue that gets to be flipped into the transverse plane. Whereas this tissue here the, in the green would be completely black and I would have a good contrast between those two tissues. However, if I wanted to make sure that the blue tissue, tissue Y, is the tissue that is really, really dark, I would want to wait this inversion time. So from a longer time for from the 180 degree inversion to the next 90 degree excitation. At that point, then that tissue is crossing the null point, and if I hit a 90 degree excitation right at that point, all the other tissues that have either positive or negative longitudinal magnetization will be flipped into the transverse plane, while this specific tissue will not. So that is the overall premise of T1 recovery uh, when it comes to inversion recovery. Something to keep in mind just going forward is that inversion recovery, because I take it, it, it takes longer for something to go completely inverted uh, negatively to completely recovered positively, that's going to take longer. And that's the reason why usually if you, instead of doing some kind of fat suppression, 
our, our spectral fat sat, if you do a stir or something like that, usually it's going to take longer because it simply takes longer for something to start out with maximum negative longitudinal magnetization and recover completely to uh, through the null point and then have at least a certain degree of positive longitudinal magnetization because remember it's it's completely fine for me to be able to excite right here at either one of these null points depending on what what tissue that I want to you know make dark on purpose but I still also need to wait an additional amount of time for this recovery to continue to occur so you'll see if I if I if I took the next 180 degree inversion pulse and I put it here instead I would only be working with this much amount of tissue X and in this case this amount of tissue Y. So sometimes we wait a longer amount of time to allow for full recovery of tissue X and tissue Y. So that is the overall premise of inversion recovery.